Hello and welcome to our Spring 2020 Pre-Arrival Webinar Series for new students, international students arriving to the University of Iowa in the Spring 2020 semester. Today's topic that we're going to discuss and present about is on-campus housing and off-campus living. A little bit about the webinar series. Um, this is a pre-arrival series uh, and which is optional for incoming international students before they arrive in Iowa City. The objective of the series is to help new international students to arrange plans for travel to and living in Iowa City to understand orientation expectations and responsibilities and the transition to student life and academics at the University of Iowa. We would like to note that all webinars are recorded and within about 10 or 14 days after live broadcast, they're posted on our website and the link is provided here on the slide. During the webinar, if you encounter any technical difficulties, please let us know in the chat function. If you have any questions related to today's topic and for our presenters today, please use the Q&A function to post your questions. We will answer them live at the end of the webinar as time permits. If you have not received your I-20 or DS 2019 document, please pay the issue global shipping fee so that ISS's department can mail this document to you. Only if you have this document, you can apply for your respective visa. This information is also contained in the pre-arrival checklist in IHOG and the website address is provided on the slide. If you have any questions or concerns about your immigration document, please contact our orientation team at isss-orientation at uiowa.edu. Some important dates. On October 1st is undergraduate admission acceptance deadline. Then on December 14th is the earliest day to arrive to Iowa City. January 12th is the latest day to arrive to Iowa City because on January 13th, we start our mandatory orientation for international students. And it's going to be a joint orientation for both undergraduate and graduate students. And on January 21st starts our spring 2020 semester. Let's do presenter introductions. Hello everyone, my name is Virginia Ibrahim Olin. I'm our Director of Housing Administration for University Housing and Dining, and my pronouns of reference are she, her, and hers. Hello everyone, my name is Kendall Arthur, and here with the University Housing and Dining, I am a Residence and Hall Coordinator. My pronouns are he, him, his. Hello, my name is Amanda Elkins. I'm an attorney and the Director of Student Legal Services, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. Hello, and my name is Andrea Siebenman, and I am ISS's advisor and also the webinar uh, moderator for today. Let's review quickly today's goals. We will provide an overview of university housing and dining services for undergraduate students, including application timeline, dining options, facilities, and more. We will also learn about the advantages and disadvantages of living in privately owned housing located off campus. And we will also learn about the best practices for obtaining off-campus housing, things to consider before signing a rental agreement, and ways to avoid potential pitfalls in the process. And again, at the end, we will have time for a live question and answer. Let's begin our presentation. Yes, um, so a little information about um, the university of about university housing here at Iowa. Um, just to let you know what exactly you'll be walking into is this. Um, here at Iowa, we have about six thousand three hundred and thirty-three students living on campus. Uh, we have about one hundred and fifty-eight residents and sisters who are very much students there to assist you. Later on in this presentation, we'll be giving you a little more information about the RA position and what they do. We have fourteen living learning communities. 10 residence halls, 15 retail dining locations, three marketplaces, and one um, food truck. In this presentation, we'll be giving you information not only about housing, but also food options, simply because both those um, come under um, us here at, at University Housing and Dining. 
So our timeline for spring 2020 applications and room assignments. In mid-October, the housing application will open and we will email all students who have been admitted to the University of Iowa for spring 2020 to let you know that if you are interested, it is time to apply for housing. On December 15th, we ask that you have let us know if you need an ADA, and that would stand for Americans with Disabilities Act. So if you're a student with a disability or need a medical accommodation, we'd like to hear from you by December 15th. Then in late December, we will email you room assignments to your at uiowa.edu email account. On January 11th is um, an early arrival day for you to come and get acclimated in order to be here uh, in time for your orientation that begins on January 13th. The rest of the students will move into the residence halls on January 18th, and then folks will remain on campus until May 16th, 2020. Now, um, earlier uh, we mentioned about um, living learning communities, and so um, we'd really like to give you some information about those in case that's something you're interested in. Living learning communities, or LLCs, are designated floors in our buildings where students live together based on academic interest or identity. LLC participants are generally en enrolled in a course in common, and events are planned um, ever so often to bridge academic and social connections between students and faculty. Now, you might be wondering, um, why do um, we do this? Or why do we have LLCs um, on our campus? The reason is because um, re research shows um, students who get involved in LLCs are more likely to stay in college, earn a higher GPA, as well as experience a greater degree of satisfaction with their overall college experience. So residence halls and the University of Iowa have several different room types. And this is a listing of the most common ones that you would experience. A double room is a room shared by two students and they have a community or an individual bathroom of, down the hall. We will talk about our bathroom styles later in the presentation. A standard double is slightly smaller than a regular one. A double with pod configuration, what that means is that that's a, a room occupied by two students and they have an individual use bathroom down the hall and it's located in one of our newer buildings, either Peterson or Catlett. A suite style room with a shared bathroom and kitchen, uh, this is a room that may be shared between two, three, or four different students. They all have a common bathroom and kitchen, and students who live in these are eligible for our lowest meal plan, the Hawkeye plan. And then a triple room is just as it sounds. There are three students that live there, so you would have two roommates instead of just one. It's important to note that single rooms or rooms with a private bathroom only shared by you and your roommate are extremely limited on campus. These are not likely options for new spring students. Okay, now um, for uh, looking at our meals uh, as well as our meal plan options, um, on here, um, We'll be talking a little about the different options here available on campus, just to let you know uh, what's out there, as well as you know what you'll be getting for your money, depending on which option you choose. Um, the gold plan is our unlimited plan, which means basically you're able to eat as much as you can in the dining hall. Um, with the gold plan, you also get 75 flex meals of a semester, eight gets passes, and for all for a cost of $1,890 per semester, all right? Our next option is the black plan. The black plan gives you 145 meal swipes, 75 flex meals, as well as eight um, guest meals a semester. That costs $1,705 a semester. Now you might be wondering um, which one might be the best option for you. Normally the rule of thumb is that um, if you wake up early every morning and you like to have breakfast, the gold plan might be the option for you. If not, you might want to consider the black plan. All right. And lastly, um, the Hawkeye plan is really our option mainly for our students in um, Mayflower, I believe. And so generally it doesn't really offer uh, uh, marketplace swipes, but at the same time, you are able to get um, 75 flex meals on the go, all for a cost of $735 um, per semester. Now, we spoke earlier about um, flex meals. And so um, one thing we want to let you know is what exactly those are. These are um, basically meals on the go, which you can use at 
pretty much any retail location on campus. All you need to do is swipe your card and grab whatever you see there based on what, um, what they have available, all right? Each of our different dining locations will let you know what exactly you will get um, for that swipe. All right, um, we also understand that sometimes you might not really know the plan that's best for you until you have that plan. And so you are able to make changes as long as that change is done by January 31st of 2020 in the spring semester. Whatever is on your account um, after that date is basically what you'll be um, confined to until May checkout. So thinking about the overall cost for living on campus, the rates here are provided for a full academic year. So those of you that would just be living with us for the spring semester 2020 would just need to cut all of these rates in half. But you can see that we've got um, both double room and single room prices available to you for a more traditional residence hall room, Mayflower, and then our two new buildings in Peterson and Catlett. And these are, the again, the average prices because our most common room type is a double room, uh, sharing with one other person. Uh, the black meal plan is what the, the most common one that students tend to take, although as Kendall mentioned, you may want to change it and you can certainly do that. And then we also provide you with something called Hawkeye dollars and what those are is that that is money that is put into an account that you can then utilize with your university ID to take care of laundry and incidentals or pay for items out of a vending machine. If you are a student with a disability who may need uh, an accommodation or potentially support for your medical um, condition or medical equipment that you might utilize, we would be happy to work one-on-one -on -one with you to determine what your specific needs are. On the application, you'll check a box to tell us, hey, I might need uh, an ADA or a medical accommodation. And then what you'll also do is submit a form to us. You will complete one part of the form, your medical provider will complete another part of the form, and then uh, what you'll do then is work with our colleague, Vanessa, who will review your information. In order for us to support you with the most variety possible, we would need to hear from you by December 15th, 2019. It is very helpful for you to be aware that University Housing and Dining handles our housing accommodations separately than Student Disability Services, and Student Disability Services manages any accommodations that you might need in the classroom in order to be successful even with your disability. So please contact them if you think that you may need accommodations uh, for your work in the classroom. So one thing we'd like to also share with you is that um, it's totally fine and okay if let's say you need any assistance or support um, in the residence halls. We have quite a few staff members, um, some of whom live in the halls like you, who are there to provide um, assistance, all right? And so um, the first um, we would like to talk about are our RAs or the resident assistants. A resident assistant is a member of each residence hall floor. RAs are student staff members who are carefully selected and trained. Their job is to assist their residents in adjusting to the halls and to the University of Iowa. Some of the other things they do is that they also plan an um, event and they come check in with, on you um, in your room just to make sure you're doing okay. And they are very much an invaluable resource. So feel free to uh, reach out to your RE once you get here in January. You also have um, hall coordinators like myself uh, who are full-time professionals that supervise the RAs. We also live in the building and we're there to support um, student success and engagement. Lastly, um, in the event that let's say you, you're going through like a personal crisis or you'd like a, another professional to, to, um, to talk to, we do have embedded counselors as well in the halls. We have two of them. They don't live on campus, but they are very much there to provide a confidential resource for students. One thing we'd like to uh, let you know is that they're free. And so you never have to worry about like, you know, how you're going to pay. All you need to do is to just stop by to make an appointment and they'll be more than happy to support you. So I can provide a little bit more information about what our embedded therapists do. Uh, they can provide you individual counseling or psychotherapy sessions. They do group offerings, so that way you might meet with another with several other students to try to better understand yourself. 
Um, they offer crisis and problem solving counseling. And then if there is a major event on campus uh, that a variety of students would need support for, they certainly will come into our residence halls and offer uh, counseling in the moment. Our counselors, again, are free and available to all the students who live in the residence halls. And if you choose to live off campus, you still have access to free counseling provided through the University Counseling Services. And they have offices located across campus in several buildings. Now, we know some, um, because um, single rooms are not um, too common on campus, um, most people will end up having at least one roommate. And so we know sometimes um, if you've never shared a room with someone, that can be very daunting or even like um, scary, but that's okay. Um, so the, the, the tips we'd like to share with you are as follows. Uh, get to know your roommate for, um, for who um, your roommate is. Like, like get to know like their, their name, like their interests, etc. just so that you know you can just start building that connection. Um, take your roommate agreement very seriously. Uh, once you get here in the spring semester, your RAs will be stopping by to have a roommate agreement um, with you so that you know they can have a conversation to, to let you guys know what's allowed, what's not allowed, and just to set up some ground rules um, in that room. Um, make sure you're taking it very seriously so at least like, you know, it can work for you. Um, always assume goodwill. Um, no one is, is there to get you in trouble. We're all there to very much assist you. And so um, pl um, please make sure that you, know, you always um, remember that. And lastly, communication is important. If let's say something is um, affecting you, that's okay. Just let us know and we're more than happy to, to support you as well as to help um, solve that problem. If let's say you're not able to solve the issue on your own, talk to the RE on your floor for support as well as as a form of mediation, they're there to assist you as well. All you need to do is to just reach out to them. So we want to provide some information about our buildings. Uh, the residence halls are open to students of any gender. And some of our buildings are uh, organized into floors by gender. And so there might be one floor entirely of women and then another floor entirely of men. But all of our buildings are mixed. And so those buildings that have single gender floors or wings are Burge, Courier, Hillcrest, and Reno Halls. We also have many buildings that have mixed gender floors, and that arrangement is where there is one room uh, on the hallway that may have men in it, and then the next room across from it could have women living in that room. Uh, and those buildings are Catlett, Dom, Mayflower, Peterson, Stanley, and Slater. All students are typically assigned a roommate with the same gender that they have, and all of our buildings provide privacy in using the restroom, whether that be in the community style restrooms or in the single user restrooms, which we'll talk about next. Yes, yeah, so as Virginia said, um, we do have a variety of bathroom styles on campus, and so we'd like to let you give you a little more information on that. At least that way you know what to expect and depending on where you choose to live. Um, we have three types, but the first one I'd like to start with is um, our community style of showers or as community style bathrooms. Um, those pretty much have locked access as single gender and are shared between about 12 to 15 um, people on the floor. In there, um, what you'll find is that you have like a row of toilets, a row of sinks, as well as a row of showers. And these options you find typically in some of our larger halls like Birch, Courier, Hillcrest, and Reno. The next option we have are like this, are called the single user port style. And so these um, are, these all have locks, and so you're able to um, pretty much like, you know, secure yourself as soon as you get in there. They cater to anyone of any gender. They are shared by um, between 12 and 15 people on the floor for using one person at a time. In there, in every single room, you will find a sink, shower, and toilet. And these are typically found in Catlett, Dorm, Peterson, Slater, and Stanley Halls. All right. Now, in Mayflower Hall, that's the only hall you have suite style bathrooms. And so um, generally, you would find uh, in the suite style, uh, they're shared between two and four um, students. And in there, you have two sinks, one shower, and one um, toilet. All right. And so please make sure you're remembering that in case you know you're curious about what bathroom types to expect, depending on where you choose to live. Now, as you're planning your arrival for January, we want to make sure you're aware of all the different room furnishings that are provided. And we, the residence hall rooms come fully furnished. 
uh, with a bed, a dresser, and a desk. Uh, they they come with recycling containers. You have the option to acquire a landline telephone, although we know most people are using mobile phones these days. Uh, we also have ethernet and we have Wi-Fi in all of the residence halls available for you. And then if you're interested in having a cable and a TV jack, you could certainly watch TV, you just have to bring your own. We have a full listing of what to bring, broken down by clothing and including your personal and toiletry items on our website. If you just go to housing.uiowa.edu slash what to bring, it will give you everything that you might want to consider having with you. Okay, so now that we've um, given you a little more information about, uh, about housing and dining here on campus, uh, we want to give you a little more tips or a few more tips on just the application process in terms of what to expect. Uh, please remember that rooms are selected on a first come first served basis. Generally, you may be impacted by those who submitted applications before you. So that being said, we'd recommend you to submit your, complete your application and pay your fee as fast as possible so that hopefully you can get the option that you're most interested in. We encourage you to be flexible and open to multiple options. That's because because our halls are so different and they offer different amenities, um, some halls or some room types tend to be more popular than others. And so it might be possible that you might not get your first option. And that's okay, just make sure you're looking at others. That way you have a room to come to on campus when you get here in January. All room relationships take time and communication. That's because sometimes you might not be living with someone you necessarily know, and that's okay. As long as you get to know them, you will be able to develop a very positive living situation. Another thing we want to recommend is that um, you submit um, applications on your own and you communicate directly to University Housing and Dining. Because you're the one living here, um, we want to make sure that we're tailoring your experience to you. And so unless you don't do it yourself, we won't necessarily know how to best um, support you. All right. But nonetheless, um, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to us and one of our representatives will be more than happy to assist you as soon as they get that alert. And so if you're interested in talking with one of our staff members, our office is open from 8 until 5, Monday through Friday. You are certainly welcome to call or email. We know that that tends to be easier. We typically respond to most people within 24 to 48 hours over a business day. And if you happen to be on campus and want to meet with someone one-on-one, -on -one, we typically are able to have a staff member present to meet with you between 8.30 and 4.30 p.m. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Hey again, everyone. Um, this is Amanda Elkins. I'm the, uh, the attorney and the director at Student Legal Services. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about living off campus. And uh, so we'll talk about the pros and cons of living off campus, the advantages and disadvantages. Um, we'll talk about how to find an apartment and then how to um, live in that apartment basically. Um, so first off the advantages of living off campus. First you're going to have more options for types of housing. Um, you're, there's going to be more options if you'd like to live by yourself or if you'd like to have a private bedroom that you don't share with another person. Um, it's possible that you could save money. Um, that compared to living on campus it, it really just depends on the type of apartment or house or townhouse that you uh, you select. Um, there may be increased availability for parking. Um, parking can be can be difficult to find on campus at times, um, but many apartment buildings include parking or will allow you to pay for parking and you'd be given an assigned parking space. Um, if you are planning to bring your family with you, especially children, um, then uh, living off campus uh, is probably a better option for you. That being said, there are disadvantages to living off campus. Uh, first is a risk of low quality housing um, and lack of responsive maintenance. If you live on campus and you have a question or you need assistance, you have um, resident uh, advisors and hall coordinators and housing and dining staff who uh, maintain the property but also can likely respond more quickly to your concerns. Um, there's also the disadvantage with respect to the, the cost of the, the unit because usually you'll be paying a monthly rental amount 
You'll have to provide a security deposit to cover any damages that you cause. There could be increased uh, transportation costs. Um, if you live far away from campus, um, you may be paying for utilities, uh, including water and, and electric and cable and internet, where you wouldn't be paying those if you lived on campus. Um, and then roommate problems. Um, so again, one of the challenges of, of living off campus is that um, you don't have as much uh, on campus, you wouldn't have on campus support um, through a resident assistant, although you're always welcome to come to our office uh, if you have legal questions. Uh, for finding an apartment, uh, we recommend that you first consider the cost of renting and whether it is financially a good decision for you. We would like you to read the entire lease before you sign it. The lease is a written contract between you and the owner of the property and about the terms and conditions of living at their unit. Um, there's a couple different kinds of leases in Iowa City. The most common is called joint and several liability. And what that means is that uh, you are financially responsible for your roommate. So if your roommate does not pay the property owner their fair share of the, the rent, then you're required to pay for them. And this can obviously cause some, um, some conflict. There's another type of lease um, called individual leases where you live with another person, um, but you don't share finances. So you don't, um, you each pay a monthly rental fee to the landlord directly. Um, so you want to, it, you have to decide what works best for you. Uh, we would like you uh, to sign, or excuse me, to look at the apartment or the rental house uh, before you sign. And I know that can be difficult for those of you who um, may not be getting to Iowa City right away, but if possible, you should ask maybe a friend, um, if uh, a future coworker, someone who would be willing to actually go to the apartment or the rental unit uh, to look at it to make sure it's in good condition. Once you get to Iowa City, um, you are welcome to bring your lease to our office and a lawyer will review it with you and answer questions that you have. Um, you do need to call in advance to schedule an appointment at our office. If possible, we recommend that you talk to people who have lived in the apartment before or who live in the same building um, because they'll be able to give you information about um, the neighbors or about working with the owner or whether it's a noisy place or whether parking is easy to find. And then lastly, we suggest that you check the rental permit. So if you're going to be living in a rental unit in Iowa City, you can go to the housing inspector's website through the city of Iowa City and you'll be able to find uh, a report of any recent uh, maintenance issues or repairs that the owner had to make uh, in order to be in compliance with the housing laws. So signing a lease. Uh, as I mentioned, a lease is a, is a contract, it's written, and it's legally binding. And so what that means is once you sign it, you're, you're locked in. The landlord expects you to move into the apartment and expects you to pay money every month. Um, it's not the type of thing that you can just change your mind about. And there can be serious financial consequences if you decide not to move into an apartment or you decide you don't like it and you want to move out early. We recommend that you sign the lease at the same time as your roommates, if possible. You should get a copy of the signed document for your records, um, because if you ever have questions about your lease, the first thing you should do is read your lease. Um, to see if that's covered. Maybe the landlord's doing something incorrectly, but you wouldn't know that if you didn't have the written agreement. Likewise, if you would like uh, me uh, or someone at my office to read the lease uh, or answer questions, I need to see what we're talking about. I need to see the agreement that you have with the owner. Another tip is to consider living alone. Uh, the reason for that is because sometimes when there's a difference of opinion or you have a difficult difficulty with the person that you're living with, being able to live by yourself in, in maybe a one bedroom apartment can save you some of those troubles. And then lastly for this slide is to never sign an incomplete lease. Sometimes these documents can be um, multiple pages long and sometimes they'll, they'll say, well, there's an addendum or there's an addition to the lease and you wanna make sure that you see that and you agree with that. 
Another thing I wanted to mention is that if you, let's say you think the rent is too high, uh, that the rental amount is too high, you can ask a landlord or a property owner to change the terms of the contract. Ever, you're allowed to ask, and they may be willing to do that. And if they are, you should write it down as opposed to just having a verbal agreement. If you are, if there's something you don't like about a particular apartment, you don't have to sign the first lease that you see. Um, it's okay to look at multiple units or consider multiple leases. It, it's really about finding what you're comfortable with. Uh, before you move into your apartment or, or when you move into your apartment, we recommend that you purchase renter's insurance. Um, it's similar to car insurance, um, which, we, which is, Car insurance is required uh, here in Iowa if you have a vehicle and you'll be driving a vehicle. Renter's insurance is not required, but it is strongly recommended. And that would cover a situation where maybe you accidentally have a, a small kitchen fire or there's water damage, um, and it, it, renter's insurance would, would pay for those damages. If you, um, it would also help you in situations where maybe um, your next door neighbor had a fire or the landlord, is something broke because a, a, a pipe was old and it broke. Um, and renter's insurance uh, provides coverage and, and can help you replace your items. We strongly recommend that you complete a move-in checklist. Um, and this is a document where you um, write down the condition of the unit when you move in. Um, if you, the property owner, uh, also called a landlord, doesn't provide you a checklist, you can use one that's available on our website. And so what we want you to do is go through your apartment and see, is there a hole in the wall? Is there a tear in the carpet? Is, the, is there something, is there a stain? Is something not clean? We want you to write those things down because we don't want the landlord to blame you for them. We want you to only be held responsible for things that you cause. Uh, along these same lines, you should take pictures and video of your unit, again, to document the condition of what it looked like on the day you moved in. And then uh, you'll need to check your lease to see what utilities you have to pay. Um, some landlords cover some of the utilities, some utilities are paid directly to the landlords, and some are paid directly to the utility companies. Um, and so the, it's typically water and then the electric bill. Um, and so the water company is the city, um, the city of Iowa City or the city of Coralville, um, which is right next to Iowa City. Uh, and then the, the energy company is called Mid-American Energy. And I believe the contact information is on our website for you uh, if you need to call and, and set that up to make sure that you have those things ready when you move in. While you're living in the apartment, really think of it as your home uh, and how you would treat it if you owned the place or if you were living with your family, for example. So you should clean regularly. Um, it's basically your job to keep the apartments in the condition that you found it in. Now, obviously, it's not going to look exactly the same because you've been living there for a year. Uh, but clean regularly. Um, if you and your roommate maybe want to have an agreement where you're in charge of the kitchen and they're in charge of vacuuming, you could, you could make up an agreement between roommates. Um, you, you should pay, always pay your rent on time. Rent money is going to be due on the first of the month. And uh, how you pay your rent money depends on the agreement that you have. Sometimes you have to mail in a check. Sometimes you can go into the office to pay. Sometimes you can pay online. Um, that, that differs uh, depending uh, on the contract. If there's ever a time while you're living in your apartment that something breaks or you have a leaky faucet, um, or let's say there's a, a, a rainstorm and, and there's water leaking inside, or a, a window gets damaged by the, the weather, you should contact your landlord right away. Um, and you can, again, how you contact your landlord depends on your written contract. Sometimes you can call them, you can text them, you could email them, or they might have a way to report it via their website. Uh, maybe most importantly is that uh, if you've never been to Iowa before or even parts of the United States that get very cold uh, in the winter, if you're going to, let's say you're going to be gone for a, a weekend in January after you get here, do not turn the heat all the way off. 
You could turn it down to maybe 55 or 60 or 65 degrees, but if you turn the heat all the way off um, during the winter months, the, the water pipes can freeze and they can break. Um, and it causes a lot, a lot, a lot of damage. All right, moving out, uh, most leases end in uh, mid to late July. Um, and so you need to clean the apartment or the rental unit. This, this applies to houses, condos, townhouses, um, any, any type of rental unit. Again, your job is to put it back in the condition that you found it in. You should take pictures of the good condition that you left your apartment in. You need to let your um, landlord know what a new address for you is um, because uh, at the beginning of your lease, you pay a deposit to the landlord and that is money that they hold on to and they get to keep if you've damaged the property. However, if you haven't damaged the property and you've documented that you have not damaged the property, they will send you the money back and they need to know where to send it. Um, there's a lot more information about renting on our website um, and that's listed there. I, I do want to mention that even though today we're only talking about uh, living off campus, our office can answer all kinds of legal questions that you have while you're a University of Iowa student. We give you free legal advice while you're a student on a variety of issues, uh, including um, divorces, immigration, contract review, um, if you have questions about our uh, alcohol laws in, in Iowa and in the United States, if you um, uh, want to go to court, if you believe someone owes you money, um, if you ever need a notary, so a notary is someone who signs official documents for you, we can do all of those things for you uh, without charge. 